Three tips that changed my photography forever. I cannot believe I went so long without knowing these three things. But once I made them a part of my, well, my life, it goes beyond business, everything got better. And I'm gonna share those tips with you today. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer. I've been doing it since 2010, teaching photography and business since 2012. And I mean, there's a billion things that I could teach you, and that would be uh, a conservative estimate. But these three tips have made such a big difference, I wanted to make a video all about them. So you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. And the way that my brain works, I pay attention to detail and I critically analyze everything. I can't turn it off. And sometimes I just want to watch the movie without picking apart all the, you know, laws of physics they're disregarding or whatever. So you get to learn from my attention to detail, we'll say, and not make those same mistakes. Tip number one, less is more. Tip number two, it's not about you. And tip number three, what have you failed at recently? So tip number one, less is more. This applies to so many things that I, I do in my business and also my life. I like to take an inventory of everything that I'm doing, all the different marketing strategies that I have in place, the different vendor relationships I have. How is my, my consultation script converting? What sort of, or what vendors am I using? What products am I selling? Do I need to keep doing those things? And I have found that focusing on fewer things and scaling them up is not only easier for you to manage, but it's going to make a significantly bigger impact in your business than trying to be everywhere and doing everything sort of halfway. So let's take social media, for example. You don't need to be on Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Pick one, get really good at it, and then move on to the next one when you can then systematize that and outsource the job and then repeat again. So eventually you'll have, you know, one or two people managing all these accounts for you. You don't even have to touch them. That sounds pretty great right there. You're like, but I like social media. Cool, then do it for funsies, but not because you need to. When it comes to photography, you don't need 37 different lenses. I do most of my shoots with two lens. I've got a 35 millimeter prime and a 70 to 200 for the macro shots, only because I like that more than a macro lens, which is a preference. I earn hundreds of thousands of dollars with two lenses, and I only use two lights in all of my sessions. So you don't need a whole bag full of equipment and a ton of fancy gear. You only need what you need to get the job done. Anything else, you're just coming up with excuses and finding a way to procrastinate. Same thing goes with software subscriptions and products that you might sell to your clients. How many different album design and editing programs and just whatever, like you probably don't need all of those things. And saying, well, I can't be a photographer yet because I don't have them. Again, it's probably just an excuse, a reason to procrastinate. Because for $10 a month, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom together, and that is gonna handle 99.99% .99 of everything you could possibly need to do as a photographer, software-wise. Then yes, there's album designing software, but you don't even have to pay for those because you can do that for free inside of most ordering programs. They're usually garbage, but if the money is an issue right now, you have that option. Same thing with genres of photography. You're like, well, if I don't shoot headshots and weddings and products and babies and families and boudoir and seniors and everything else, then I'm leaving money on the table. Well, sure, but you're also then trying to manage all of these different brands and find out how to market and sell to all of these different people. My boudoir clients don't purchase the same things that my headshot clients purchase or my high school senior clients. So I have different menus, I have different product lines, I have different samples of everything. I set up my office differently, the studio differently based on who's coming in here. Three is already plenty to manage. I don't even really advertise my headshots or seniors. They really just come from boudoir clients and referrals or maybe you know charities that I donate to, things like that. So I focus on one main genre, my boudoir brand, and everything else kind of follows through and I can be picky about what jobs I wanna take, but I don't feel compelled to shoot all these different genres anymore, which 
allows me to just focus on one type of business. And that feels really gosh darn good. Number two, it's not about you. This was a big one when I first got started. I wanted to be super famous fashion photographer, gets invited to red carpet events, Hollywood movie premieres and fashion shows and all kinds of things like that. I want to be like the cool guy that gets out of the limo and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's Mike Lloyd. Look who's here. And if that's your objective, great. If you think I'm ridiculous, that's that's fair. But when I actually started photographing people and saw that the way my process, not even just the images, but how I do my sessions changed the way they see themselves and transform their confidence, changed their lives. Like, well, shoot, I had no idea why I was actually doing what I was doing. I had no idea that, that my why was so superficial and really didn't matter at all because I've done the runway shows. I've done the Hollywood movie premieres, the red carpet events. I photograph celebrities and professional athletes and I have movie covers and album covers and all kinds of stuff like that. Done magazine covers all over, all over the country, but it like none of that feels anywhere near as cool as, you know, single mom of three kids sitting on the couch, looking at the photos, crying because she's never felt beautiful Uh, or hasn't felt beautiful since having her children who are all, you know, in their early 20s now. And to me, I will take that every single day over another magazine cover. Like, it's cool to have those things, sure. But when you realize the impact that you can have with your photography and how your business can create a new life for your family, like, I took yesterday off to go hang with my dad all day, and I don't feel guilty about that. Uh, I can schedule time to go on vacation and take my parents on vacation and go visit friends or just I have the freedom to kind of do what I want. I still work a boatload more than most people that I know, but that's fine because it allows me the freedom to do whatever the F I want to do. And that kind of financial stability and time availability will absolutely create a much better family life, professional life, everything life for you. So think about all the bigger picture ways this photography business can impact your life. And when you have that kind of energy and you're headed in that direction, everything blows up so much faster in a, in a good way. And number three, what have you failed at today? I loved this story. I heard it from Sarah Blakely. She's the founder of Spanx, self-made billionaire and just all around incredible woman. She would sit down at the table and her dad would ask her every night at dinner, what did you fail at today? And it wasn't to ostracize or punish or ridicule. The idea was try something new, try something you've never done, try something scary and learn from it. Improve, find the courage to do something new and scary because you're going to come out better on the other side. And I mean, she started a billion dollar brand and did all kinds of things. She got turned down by so many different companies who did not want her ideas or to sell her products. No one thought that they would sell. And I think it's fair to say shapewear is a pretty, pretty sizable industry here in 2023. So I think that's absolutely incredible. And I ask friends that, and when I have kids someday, I will absolutely make that a part of our routine is what have you failed at today? And I keep myself in check as well. What's something new and scary that I didn't think that I could do or that I've never done before, but I'm like, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Probably, probably nothing. So get out there and do it. So what have you failed at today? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're like, well, I feel like I've lived my whole life like an insurance adjuster. Everything is safe and predictable and boring and sterile. And I have no idea. Well, I don't know. Go bungee jumping this weekend. Go do something exciting. Ask the person out that you've been attracted to. Don't worry about what society thinks if you ask a person out like that or whatever. I don't know. Just go do something new that you may or may not succeed at because you're only going to be a better person because of it. Unless you're going to like rob a bank or something. Don't do that. Probably, probably shouldn't do that. So those are my three biggest tips for transforming your photography and your business and your life. Really? Number one, less is more. Cut out everything that isn't absolutely positively adding to everything that you're doing. You're not going to miss anything else. Number two, it's not about you. Find a bigger why. Figure out how what you do can impact more people. And I guarantee everything is going to take off so much faster. And Number three, what have you failed at today? Go try something new and scary because you're going to come out better on the other side. 
I've got other killer videos on this channel all about marketing and sales and lighting and posing and the magic that goes into running a professional photography business. So be sure to subscribe to this channel because I hear that subscribing to the Boudoir Guild's channel will make you a better photographer. So that is tip four right there. Bonus. And if you're like, that's cool, Mike, but I would rather just dive in and learn everything that you know right now, cool. Head over to boudoirguild.com. I'll have that link down below and check out the courses I have available so that you can quickly start making multiple six figures of revenue in your boudoir photography business. And if you're like, well, I shoot families, cool. Everything will still apply. Just instead of photographing boudoir clients, you're going to photograph families. Everything else is the same. You are amazing. See you inside.